Hey, Jan Oser here. In this tutorial, we'll look at the new Lumetri Color Interface in Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2015. From my perspective, it's one of the most significant interface updates over the last few versions. So let's start with the look up here. You can see that the workspaces are now permanently up top, so you can easily switch, say, from the effects workspace into the color workspace, which is what you access when you want to get into the Lumetri Color panel. And we're going to be editing this clip here. Let me go ahead and open up the panel. And a couple of things about the effect. Um, the Lumetri color effect is not a permanent or fixed effect. It's not applied automatically. But once you open up the panel and apply any adjustment, it's automatically added to the effect controls panel here. And in the effects control panel, it acts like any other effect that you would apply. So this is where you can reset everything. This is where you can apply keyframes. This is where you can copy and paste. This is where you can uh, save a preset. So you're going to be working in two workspaces. For the most part, you'll make your adjustments here. You'll do a lot of um, keyframing and resetting in this panel here. And then you can save off the preset as a look here or as a preset here and copy and paste it or save it as a preset here. So you're going to be working in two interfaces when you apply and use the Lumetri color effect. The panel itself has five basic areas. And the basic correction from my perspective is where you want to fix your clip. So here's where you want to fix all the problems in your clip or if you're working with multiple clips that might have um, multiple clips from different cameras that might have different color balancing. Here you can choose an input preset and that will kind of flatten out all the color in the clip and you can work um, with a common starting point. So you're going you're gonna to correct your clips here both for uh, multiple cameras and for problems in your, in your single camera shoots and then you're going to get creative down here. And there's a little bit of interplay, you can go back and forth among all of these, but kind of the way I see it working is you're going to fix up here, get creative down here. So this clip, it's from a, a trip to Moscow, the famous uh, Onion Dome near the Kremlin. So let's take a look at our Lumetri scopes. And these scopes are completely redesigned for the 2015 edition. And as before, you have a great deal of customization options regarding which scopes that you have here and what they look like and what they show. So by default, you get the four scopes. It's a vector scope, histogram, parade, and waveform. I prefer working in the parade and waveform so the parade shows it's an RGB parade, so it's showing uh, red, green, blue values. And with my waveform, I prefer working in Luma, so I only have brightness values here. I don't have color values. So now we're ready to work. We've got our scopes up, and we're in our basic correction mode. So this clip, you know, we can look at the color values, and the color values are pretty even. So, you know, I would... You know, you don't see any obvious problems here, so I would say, okay, we're probably pretty good from a color perspective. And, you know, we've, we've got peaks, you know, these white air areas here are right around 100 IRE, so those are good. And, and we've got valleys down here close to the zero IRE, so we've got pretty good contrast in the clip as a whole. But the mid-tone regions are a bit too dark for my liking. So what you can do in the basic color correction area is just brighten the shadows. And we can see increased brightness in this area. We're not brightening the whites. We are pulling the blacks a little bit off the bottom. So I probably want to push those back down to make sure that we maintain good contrast. And maybe bo boost these a bit more. And then we can toggle this on and off and we can see that we've got increased brightness here, which is pretty much the only adjustment that this clip needed. So let's close this up and let's get creative. So easiest way to get creative in the Lumetri color panel is to apply a look. And again, there are a bunch of canned looks that you can apply. If you've created your own looks or somebody sent you a look or you downloaded one from a website, click browse and then you can load the look here. And you can browse through the looks that are installed in the program by clicking through them. The name of the look is here and you can see it applied to the thumbnail in the creative panel. And the look that I tended to like was Clean Punch HDR, and that makes the colors really pop. So if we look at this as compared to this, we see that the colors are really popping. Now, we definitely lost some off the bottom here, so we've got some contrast issues. We're, we're pushing up against the limits 
in, in all three colors and in brightness. We've lost a little bit of detail here. And we can adjust that a number of ways. We can either adjust the intensity down, which brings us back the detail here. while still improving the color dramatically, or we could even go back into the basic correction and, and adjust these settings here. So beyond the intensity slider, you can fade the clip a bit, you can uh, adjust sharpness, you can adjust vibrance, saturation, and then you can adjust the, uh, the shadow tint and the highlight tint. So I would say we're pretty much done here. And let me disable this because I want to explore some of the creative options down here. So if you want to apply a look, You've got options to create your own look using curves, color wheels, and then the vignette is kind of a standalone uh, effect included in the Lumetri color panel. Let's start with curves. I am not a big curves guy. Um, I don't use them a lot in either still images or video. Obviously, you can choose either the overall image or you can adjust red, green, or blue curves um, individually if you would like. Again, I'm not a big curves guy, so I don't use these, and, and I just wanted to show you that they're here, not demonstrate how to use them. Um, we'll demonstrate this hue saturation curve, which is kind of a, a new feature I haven't seen before, and it, and it really works well in the context of this clip. So if I was to look at this clip, I would say, I want to brighten the blues. I mean, it was a kind of a faded day. It was a, it was a March day in Moscow, it was cold, and you know, not a lot of blue in the sky. It's a little bit dingy, so I want, I want to increase the blue in the sky and the blue over here. And I also want to bring out the, the reds in the brick. I mean, this is a beautiful old building, beautiful old church, and I really want to make it pop to the eyes. And what I can do in the use saturation curve is I can choose distinct areas and make those pop. So let's start with the blue. So I click here, and this defines the blue region in the wheel. And then I just drag this out and if we want to toggle that on and off up here, we can see that it's increasing the blues both here and here. And let me expand the range of blues and the intensity. So I do that by creating another point here and I can drag this out and drag this out. And all of a sudden it's looking like a pretty pleasant day in March in Moscow. So here's our starting point and here's what we were able to create with the curves. Now that got the blues, I'd also like to boost the reds here and the reds in here. So again, I can, I can choose the preset here and that loads the uh, adjustment points here, or I could start with my own points. You know, obviously you can make the ones that you want. Let me drag these out. And all of a sudden we've got a pretty garish look. So let's bring this down a bit. And if we come up here and toggle this on and off, all of a sudden we go from a pretty dingy church and sky to some pretty eye-popping color. I mean, that, look, that looks pretty nice. Let me close this. You can also adjust using color wheels. This is a new three-wheel color corrector, and you can adjust the mid-tones, the shadows, and the highlights separately. If you like the older color correction effects, Fear not, those are still available. So if we come here to color correction, I liked the fast color corrector, use that a lot. And here's the three-way color corrector. You can apply those and, and, and use those separately. So you're not losing anything, you're just getting a new interface for adjusting color. And then finally, vignette. And if I wanted to add a vignette to this, I can add that either bright or dark vignette. And Here's the edge that we're working with. Can adjust the roundness and the midpoint. Once again, once I'm done, I can save all of this off as a look. I can save it off as a cube. Um, as before, if I just wanted to copy and paste this to this clip, I could do so. Overall, the new Lumetri color panel makes it simple to correct my footage and then creatively control the color with canned looks or my own adjustments. It's one of the best new additions in the Premiere Pro 2015 update.